Joining me in studio to discuss this, my next door neighbor, so to speak, <laughs> since I represented Arizona in the Congress and he was a state senator from New Mexico, it's Joe Carrero. Joe, we really appreciate you checking in today on America's Forum. Oh, thank you so much, J.D. This is a great program. It's a great topic to talk about. Very timely. And as a fellow Southwesterner, you right. and I have shared frustration really trying to get this message out to the rest of America. And as we've seen, Joe, for weeks, the crossing of illegal children has been labeled a, quote, humanitarian crisis. But what many have failed to see has come out in an investigation by documentary filmmaker Dennis Michael Lynch. Lynch spent a day at the Texas-Mexico border, and he said he was amazed at what he witnessed. Major ones, joblessness, joblessness welfare, national security, so on and so on. And as I stood on that border and I watched those cartels drag over all the things they did, and I saw more scouts on the U.S. side watching than I did Border Patrol, and then I went over to the bus depots and watched thousands upon thousands of illegal aliens be bussed around almost as if they were at Disneyland, being sent off to somewhere USA, all I could think was that all those major problems just became a major epidemic. Joe Carrero, you hear Dennis Michael Lynch. Do you share his evaluation? Absolutely. This, we have to do something. Of course, years ago, we had the opportunity with, uh, when we looked at uh, after 9-11, securing our borders, making sure that we had a capability to understand who was coming into our country. But now we have, it seems to be wide open to where we just don't have to worry about terrorists sneaking in. We have cartels that are just absolutely coming in in, in broad daylight, bringing drugs in, controlling areas of our country that, that we just uh, seem to not have uh, uh, absolute control over them anymore. Joe, we were talking earlier, and if we, if we go back to the beginning, when, when those of us in Congress voted to set up a Department of Homeland Security, I know that early on you had a chance to visit with former Pennsylvania Governor Tom Ridge, who became mm -hmm. the first Secretary of Homeland Security. Take us back through those early planning sessions and what you thought went right and perhaps more importantly, what you think went wrong? Well, what actually happened is it, right after 9-11, uh, a number of senators from around the country were invited to go to Hawaii, of all places, to have a meeting to hear Tom Ridge talk about the establishment of Homeland Security Department. And we thought, what a great opportunity for us each to explain what our states needed, our desperate needs around, from around the country. There were only a few uh, senators showed up, but the plane was, was empty because no one was flying back then. Uh, Hawaii was just about empty because there, were, there weren't any travelers there. But here we were at this meeting figuring we were going to be able to broadcast and be able to talk about all the things that we, we wanted to be able to say that our state needed. What ended up happening is that they had a plan already set. It would seem like this bureaucracy was going to be an umbrella bureaucracy. It was going to be, uh, you know, all this money going into everything else but what our states needed. Our state, and of course Arizona and Texas as well, were talking about securing the border. Um, we were worried about aircraft, we were worried about uh, waterways and everything else around the country, but all of a sudden it seemed to become this broad bureaucracy that didn't focus on what we actually needed at each state, and of course New Mexico was, was a secure border crossing to make sure we knew who was coming in. Uh, we have people looking for jobs, of course, we have people coming looking for better economic conditions, but we have terrorists, we have drug cartels. That's when it all started, I think, J.D., was way back when we had an opportunity to go ahead and make a change. So you and I have been talking about border security being synonymous with national security. Correct. And, and I'm just interested in the here and now. Right now the reporting is they're coming in through Texas and they're being shipped to Arizona and then to places beyond. What has been going on? Do you have the same flood of illegals coming in there in New Mexico? No, not yet. Of course, we know it will happen, it will have to happen, but the point is that I think everybody's kind of looking at Texas. They must be having, uh, reading the newspapers that see that there's, there are jobs in Texas, there's opportunity in Texas. But of course, in New Mexico, we're at a point where we're saying, you know, we, we, we have enough uh, of a problem from people coming into our state, now all border states, but certainly when you look at the, the uh, diluting of our educational system, because we have people coming in, all these kids coming in, that we have to go ahead and educate. Now these poor kids, I mean, they're, they become political pawns in all this, and, and, and we keep hearing from, from uh, people um, uh, that they're talking about, we have the liberals saying that there's 60,000 kids coming in, that means that there's probably 120,000 kids. Of course, then you have some, some, some conservatives or some, some uh, Republicans that may say there's 120,000, which mean, means there's probably 60,000, but what it gets down to is that when you think about it, that's the 60,000 that actually have come and arrived 
at, in Texas or Arizona? What about the kids that haven't arrived? What about the kids that have been murdered, the p kids that have been kidnapped, the kids that have been starving or lost or whatever? These are the, if you really care about children, if these liberals out there really care about, you know, what's happening in, on these border uh, state and these border states, think about what's happening to these children that have been lost on the way. And to encourage more to come means there are going to be more lost, more in, in, in put in danger on this harrowing trip they're taking. And of course, we talked about the drug cartels, the coyotes, and, right. and the fact is, we not only don't have a fix on these kids, the, the, the public health concerns, the, the lack of vaccinations, but, but we look right now at the border states. There are your states side by side, much the right. way we're sitting here on this set, Joe, with Arizona and New Mexico. But governors have a right to call out the National Guard. Why do you believe it? Rick Perry wants to depend on the Texas Rangers? We haven't heard yet from Governor Susana Martinez of your state or Governor Jan Brewer of my state. And of course, we know Jerry Brown's in California. I doubt right. he'll call out the National Guard. But why hasn't Governor Martinez, in a, in a anticipatory role, called out the National Guard on the New Mexico-Mexico border? Well, we need to ask her that. I mean, I think, I think we have a situation where, first of all, there's the, the state sovereignty that we, we seem to have forgotten about, that each state has. But then again, we have a situation where the federal government is really imposing all these, these uh, extra responsibilities, for, like I said, mentioned education, health care, uh, policing, whatever, on the states that they, we, we, they, they can't afford to go ahead and, and take care of. So the federal government needs to go ahead and pay for this but also the federal government needs to go ahead and stop doing what they're doing. Uh, we can't, you know, we, we keep hearing about that, that uh, our country cannot be the, the world's policeman. Well, you know, if, if we're not, if we don't do something to protect our own country, and if we don't do something to find out why these people are coming in and stop them from having to come in, if, it, if it's to escape economic oppression or whatever, but also to make sure that terrorists aren't entering our country, that drug cartels aren't taking, uh, taking control of our southern border, that's when we have a problem. The federal government has that responsibility. And we take a look at our two states, and there are areas along our international border with Mexico designated yeah. as, uh, as national monuments right. in terms of, uh, of conservation. We understand now in your home state of New Mexico, President Obama wants to designate yet another national monument, 600,000 acres in southern New Mexico. If that transpires, the way the law reads right now, it limits the ability of the Border Patrol right. to actually enforce border law in those national monuments. Does this just mean it, it becomes a, a scenic superhighway for the drug cartels, for terrorists and other illegals? Well, I think it already has been uh, accomplished that way. I think that's what, what actually happened in New Mexico. And what's actually what that transpires and what that means is that we actually have people coming in and taking control of our land. Uh, there, there's been reports in Arizona, there's been reports in New Mexico where drug cartels are actually positioned in a position where they can see the, the, uh, the horizon and see where, where the uh, uh, border patrol is going and, and actually monitoring and letting, letting the people, the coyotes, know where to go ahead and come across the border. I mean, so they're actually taking control of our land. And, and in New Mexico, I mean, maybe we don't have enough uh, law enforcement that can take care of it, Arizona I mean, and Texas. Who is responsible to go ahead and take control of this border? We thought it was the federal government. Like I said, way back when with Tom Ridge, we thought that was Homeland Security's going to be, be their job. But, but now all of a sudden we've gotten to the point where it's, it's, we've actually lost control. And sadly, this has been a bipartisan failing. Of course. Presidents of both parties, for whatever reason, have chosen not to enforce immigration law. Joe, less than a minute left. If you could put together three things that need to be done, what would be the Joe Carrero solution? Well, in the very beginning, uh, securing our borders. Securing somehow means to everybody keeping everyone out. No, we want to bring people in, but we want to know who they are. We want to be able to figure that out. So I think the way to do it is to go ahead and have secure um, uh, border crossings, making sure that that's the first thing that has to be done. Of course, then identify people. Um, just to give you an idea, J.D., when my family came across from Italy, my, my grandmother came over with my father and my aunt when they were little kids, and they were checked for tuberculosis. They were checked for diseases. They were checked. They had to know where they were going to live. In short, orderly, legal immigration. Correct. Not letting people jump in line, not ignoring Correct. it, not trying to fast track it. Joe, sorry to move this along. It's Sorry. just what happens, that four-letter word of time. 
You can take time to comment on what State Senator Carrero has said. We'd love to get your input via social media. You can tweet us at Newsmax.com, hashtag America's Forum. There's also email and Facebook.